Moving on to our next game. We're in 1978 playing every video game. We're, we're now, now at the end playing all of the rest in alphabetical order. This is our next game. Yes, we got some sound. Classic 1978 sounds. This is Canyon Bomber on the Atari 2600. We saw this earlier in the arcades, and this is the home port. Here's the artwork for Canyon Bomber. There's the front box. This has eight games, Canyon Bomber and Sea Bomber. Wow. There's the back of the box. This one's played with the paddle controllers that Atari brings out for definitive control of your Atari game. And then we have uh, different uh, pieces of artwork. There's the example of the cartridge. Um, let's see if we get anything else. So screenshots, yeah, all color game at home. And we know with Atari, it's gonna be good. Here's the manual for Canyon Bomber by Atari. Use the standard paddle controllers to play. And then uh, it looks like we press the bread button to drop bombs and we just move the knob back and forth. Easy peasy. Let's see what the different game modes look like. Uh, play field is you're just dropping bombs and getting the most points. And then it looks like Sea Bomber is the same idea, but you're hitting targets instead of just uh, a pit with uh, to rack up points. So this is uh, game one's Canyon Bomber, two player, uh, then uh, one player is the same, but okay, so Atari has different game modes. I wanna see what the Sea Bomber, so Sea Bomber starts with game seven. Okay. Cool, all right, we have different versions, but it looks like the only one we have is the North American. So this is 1978 playing Canyon Bomber on the Atari 2600. All right, we booted it up. When the game first starts, uh, nothing happens till you reset the system. So let's check out the first game by hitting reset on the console. And now I am the yellow plane that's flying across the screen. And when it, all I need to do, do, do I even have paddle control? I don't, uh, I don't have any control of the plane. It's moving by itself. All I control is when the bomb drops. So I'm now the yellow biplane. They just keep switching planes. Yeah, now I'm the yellow helicopter. They just pick different planes and then uh, the different colors that drop on determine what points you get. And then the more points, oh, the computer's destroying me. So I was in the middle of explaining. But you can see the computer's got 267 and at least I'm playing against the computer. We've seen other Atari games where we have to have a second player. And yep, it's just like the arcade. You just drop, trying to get as many points as you can. And it, uh, essentially, it just, I, you just push fire over and over again and drop down to get more. All right, let's change out the game modes. Let's go to game seven. So we're flipping the switch on the console. And this now is a C bomber. So now I am, again, the yellow plane. And I'm trying to aim my... Oh, I see. I, I'm using the trackball or, or the um, paddle controller. And I'm moving the... Let the dotted line back and forth to determine where my shot's gonna go and drop the bombs. So now you have a little bit more level of difficulty. You have to balance the timing with the dotted line of when it drops and see if you can get it to fall because it's gonna fall at different times or whenever you have the dotted line. So I'm the yellow, yellow plane moving across the side. Can I get one on this guy? Oh, he got it for me, okay. So it's... Uh, much more difficult. It'd be a blast to play with two people, though. Let's see. Going down there. And this is based on another arcade game we played. So this is two arcade games in one. In the home. That is awesome. Alright, that is Canyon Bomber. And that is very good for the time. Uh, that is above average. Three stars is our average. But three and a half for Canyon Bomber. Pretty good. Fun to play. All right, moving on to our next game. We're still on the Atari. This is Casino. As with all games that are uh, gambling-based, eh, we give them zero stars. We're not going to spend too much time with it. So Casino, we're moving on to our next game. Zero stars for Casino. All right, for our next game, this is Clay Buster in the arcade. Clay Buster. Looks like another one programmed all in black and white. Let's see the artwork for Clay Buster. There's the advertisement flyer, the latest in shooting games from Model Racing. Looks like uh, the arcade cabinet has a gun mounted on it. Awesome, and it's a, a shooting game or a light gun shooting game. There's the arcade cabinet with the gun on top. And then marquee, and then, yep, the game's programmed only in black and white. Let's see what this one's like. Uh, we'll go ahead and give this one a shot. So we're stepping up to the arcades, playing Clay Buster in the arcade in 1978. Okay, there we go. All we have is uh, the uh, cursor, which is the blue cursor. This is me aiming the gun uh, for what I want to shoot. And it, it says to insert a coin, so let's put a coin in. Let's check out Clay Buster. Clay Buster. 
All right, so we're starting off. It looks like it's going to shoot some things up in the air, and then we just fire at them and blow them up. Oh, wait. It didn't let me fire. Shoot. There we go. Get it. No sound effects or sound, but it's uh, trying to do more of a realistic shooting game. We've had some pretty quirky or funny ones that we've seen in the past, but this one's going for a realistic, like if you were to go to a shooting range and shoot uh, skeet. So more realistic, still gets the job done for a shooter, and uh, it works really well. At the time, arcade uh, arcade owners, you would be able to play shooting games that were more realistic. Actually using a, a gun, and you would shoot uh, objects in front of you. They'd put like stuffed animals and things like that. So the video game part, eh, not as popular, but it's uh, very good for the time, at least based on the other shooting games we've seen. It was so quiet, though, without the sound. Where's the gunshots? All right, so that one is average for the time. We're going to give that one three stars for Clay Buster. Clay Buster. All right, moving on to our next game. This is Clowns in the Arcades. We are right at the cusp of the golden age of arcades. We're not quite there yet. I'd say 79, 80 is when we get to the golden age. So we're still going to get some weird uh, arcade games. And this is one that we've seen before that was called Circus. And this is kind of Atari re releasing, I'm sorry, Midway releasing their version called Clowns. All right, let's check out the artwork for Clowns. Midway's Clowns. A fun-filled game for one or two players with dual controls. Built-in ROM and RAM tester. Ooh, wow. Gotta have that. There's the arcade cabinet, very standard upright cabinet. And then our control panel looks like all we're doing is a, a paddle to move left and right, twisting the knob, and then st uh, start. start. So it's very simple controls. Yep. And some uh, freaky clown artwork. <laughs> and this one is, again, programmed only in black and white. All right, let's see if the manual tells us more about Clowns by Midway. General instructions looks like this is only about how to set up the arcade cabinet for the operator. So it doesn't help us. Different versions. Nope, we got the only one. Here we go. Let's play some clowns. We're in the arcade in 1978. Playing clowns by Midway. Oh, and we got the full gamut. We got the marquee at the top, artwork on the sides, and then uh, the, what the artwork was displaying around the CRT monitor. And some instructions right here on the uh, corner of it. It just says, put a coin in and push uh, one player. Very, very simple uh, uh, controls. Oh, we do have an overlay too. So uh, the arcade cabinet has plexiglass with different colors. So there's blue, green, and yellow, but that's just the glass covering. It's, it's, it's all programmed in black and white. And you can tell because as soon as one of the clowns hops up there, they change the same color as the uh, balloons. All right, so let's put a coin in. Cha ching And we'll push one player or push one button. All right, so we push start, and now I'm in control of uh, the seesaw at the bottom. And I can move the seesaw back and forth wherever the clown lands. It has to land on the other <laughs> the other side. If it doesn't, then the clown, the clown dies. We're killing clowns in the arcade. All right, we got a little bit of sound effects there. All right, but you're, you're just trying to get it to aim to land on the other side of the seesaw to keep going and break the blocks. It is a variation of breakout. But now you get to use real people. Oh, bam. He is down. All right, so here's another shot. Let's see. And you can see it's using a little bit of momentum. Uh, we also have some physics where it bounces off the side. Oh, there we go. Nice one. So fun, though, how the bodies are flailing around. <laughs> oh, we got a bonus. Oh. <laughs> and we got a ditty. This would mark the second time a video game has played a little song for us. That's the best we can do for music in 1978 right there. And we're playing in the arcades where that's where the boundaries are being pushed. At least video game boundaries. Come on. Oh, yeah, we got it. He's popped up at the top. Yeah, that's the way to do it. <laughs> it's still going. Go. All right, so there you go. That's pretty good for uh, clowns. We've seen something similar. Uh, in the past, so this one does it a little bit better, but we're still going to give it average for the time. This is uh, three stars for 1978. Pretty good midway. I dig it. I dig it. Yeah, man. I dig it. All right, moving on to our next game. This is Concentration on the Atari 2600. Concentration. Let's see the artwork. This is a game of concentration. Video computer system game program. 
This has eight games, hunt and score, and I'm guessing concentration too. So there's the back of the box. Oh, this one's controlled with the Atari keyboard controllers. They called it keyboard controllers, but it's essentially a numpad with uh, numbers on it. So if it's controlled with that, we'll have to do something a little different. There's an example of the cartridge for concentration. Uh, let's see if we have any other versions. No, no other versions. All right, and we don't have a manual, so this will be a little scary. Let's see what concentration is like. This is 1978 playing concentration on the Atari. All right, so let's pull up. The way we're going to play this is using the... Uh, Atari keyboard, which is just the numpad. So here we go. We want to be able to start the game. So we'll, we'll put the first game in. It has the number one in the top left corner. And then we reset the console. So we're ready to play. We're ready to play concentration. I think they're going to show us what numbers are there. So yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So why are the, the, I guess we reveal the cards and it's a matching game. So what we do is we just push the button on our keypad. So if I push the first one, let's see what happens. And try there. So then we'll go five. Looks like it's only reading the game setting instead of the... Yeah, it's not resetting and playing the first game that I want to play. Let's see if I do that one. No. Oh, it's showing... It has the different game modes, but it's not beginning the game for me. I'm pushing the buttons on the, the Atari keyboard, and it is not working. Let's try this other one. If I do that one and then go. Anything? No. All it's doing is trying to put in another game mode instead of using the controller. So not a good start for concentration. We're going to go and give that one a uh, broken. Sorry about that. Let's go with zero stars for concentration. And if you bought this game, your parents bought it in 1970, and you didn't have the Atari keyboard or the number pads, you couldn't play it. It doesn't work with just the normal uh, joystick controller. All right, moving on to our next game. <laughs> it's Concentration again. Oh no, it's on the RCA Studio 2. If you're not familiar, this is another home console that was released um, in 77, right before Atari, and it's not so good. So uh, I'm a little scared to boot up my RCA Studio 2. We'll blow the dust off of it and give it a shot. Uh, do we have any images for this? No, all we have is a screenshot, so there's not even a box for it. All right, so this is playing Concentration Match on the RCA Studio 2 in 1978. So don't adjust your sets. This is what it looked like when you booted up the RCA Studio 2. The first thing you have to do is push uh, Clear on the console. So we push Clear, and then we want to. it's going to ask what game we want to play. We push the number on the keypad. There you go. So we're now playing Concentration. So it looks like, I guess, player A goes first. Now, just so you know, the whole console, you would have to bring up next to you. There were no joysticks or controllers for the RCA Studio 2. It was two number pads, keypad A and B. And so when you wanted to play with someone, you brought the whole console to you, and then you push on the number pads to play. That's right, no joysticks, no no, no cords. It's even older than that. All right, so let's see how we play. We push a, a number on the keypad. Okay, there you go. So I push one, and if I push another number... Okay, yeah, so it's a, it's a matching game. What, what it, sh it should have been on Atari is the same idea, but for some reason the keypad didn't work for us. So let's see if I have... Yeah, so you're just using both sides, both keypads of the RCA Studio 2, and you're just playing a matching game. All right, sorry, I think I found one. There you go. So found a match, and then it looks like the player B got that one. So it's meant to be played with two people. Cool. Oh, and I think I was wrong. This is uh, not released exactly for the RCA Studio 2. No wonder it was so late. This is released for... Oh, yeah. This is this was released for a bootleg version of the RCA Studio 2 found only in Australia. So this would be our first Australian video game. Australian. And I don't know why you would want to uh, rip off or bootleg the RCA Studio 2. You picked the wrong system. You should have done Atari. Instead of the RCA Studio 2. But it was on a system called the uh, Victory MPT-02, something like that. In Australia. Alright, moving on. Our next game is Cosmic Conflict. This is released sometime in 1978 for the Philips Video Pack. And that was a European-only system. Let's take a look. 
at the artwork for the Philips Video Pack. Awesome artwork for the front. You can tell it's Europe because they get multiple names displayed under Cosmic Conflict, German, Italian, uh, French, and so forth. And let's see, this was card 11. Oh, we have a manual that came with it. Okay, a homebrew manual of Cosmic Conflict. This is... Uh, let's see what games you want to play. If you want to play the first game, we push number one. And then, let's see. It's given just a brief description description of how to play Cosmic Conflict. And we got different versions. Oh, just different Euro European or French versions. But we'll just play the European version. All right, so this is Cosmic Conflict on your Philips Video Pack in 1978. Sometime in 1978. So when you first boot it up, uh, it displays this screen, asks which game you want to play. There's the example of our joystick in the bottom left corner over there. It's a very simple, not as good as Atari joystick, with one red button, the action button. And which game we want to play? We'll play number one. So we push number one on the console. And then now we're in. I'm moving my joystick around. It's not working, but I bet that's because the second player is plugged in, you have to have the second player uh, to, to move. Yeah, so this one is being controlled by the other port. Some games did that back in the day. Oh, I'm, I'm getting destroyed now. But it's a first person space game. Cosmic Conflict is, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm moving this around and doing a first, nice, first, first, a first player shot as a, get it, get it. Oh, and I can control the shot. Oh, okay, the, the uh, what looked like a TIE fighter got me. But the, the idea of playing, a first-person space combat game is, is awesome. In the home, I think this is the first one we've ever seen uh, globally of uh, being able to play a, a first-person combat game. And it controls really well for the Philips Video Pack, at least. Awesome. Cool, that's Cosmic Conflict. That's great. Uh, really fun for the time. Above average, I'd say for sure uh, four stars. Yeah, this is uh, very good. Great game for 1978, Cosmic Conflict.